right, guys. So I'm Munaf Kapadia. I'm the self-designated chief eating officer at the Bori Kitchen. Um, these days, I'm better known as a guy who quit Google to sell samosas. But how did all of this start? It started with a argument I had with my mother over who gets to watch television in the living room. And I realized something. I realized that uh, my mom, who sacrificed a lot uh, to raise me and my three siblings, uh, has kind of given up a lot in her life. To the extent that today she's sitting at home and she's watching TV when she could be doing so much more. So as any uh, MBA would, I started coming up with ideas on how can I monetize my mother's skills. And my mom happens to be a fantastic cook. She cooks amazing food like most of our mothers do. But I also happen to belong to a community called the Dowdy Bora community. Where uh, food within our community, it's not easily available outside the community. So I decided, what if I open my house to people, to complete strangers, who come home and eat food made by my mom. So the first experience at my house, I literally took an email, I put a menu on that email, what my mom was uh, planning on making that Saturday, and I sent it out to 50 friends who normally come to my house and eat for free. And I said, guys, uh, please come to my house in Kulaba. Uh, this time around, I'll charge you 700 rupees for a meal. Would you like to come? Uh, not very surprisingly, 10 of my friends replied back immediately saying, bro, stop spamming us. Uh, one person, for some strange reason, decided to forward that email to his or her friends. And one of those friends calls me and tells me, Munaf, I would love to come to the Bori kitchen along with six of my friends. Uh, can we come? And they came for the first experience. Uh, we all sat around my dining table in my living room. Uh, my mom made the food. We, we sat. We had a great conversation. Amazing food. Uh, at the end of the experience, one of these guests gets up and hugs my mother. Uh, she tells my mom, auntie, you have magic in your hands. And I belong to a family where we don't really acknowledge each other. Yeah, like I don't know the last time I told my mom, mom, I love you. Thank you so much for doing all of this. We just hope that somehow they get it. Uh, we don't really say it. So when a complete stranger who's paying money to eat food in my house does something like this, it kind of overwhelmed my mother. And I suddenly realized that, hey, forget the financial benefits. But maybe there are certain intangible benefits to TBK which make it worth scaling up. Three years later, I'm standing on the stage. Uh, I have been recognized by Forbes India as one of the 30, uh, one of the top 30 entrepreneurs in this country under the age of 30. Because of something that started three years back where we invited people home to eat food made by my mom. Uh, I've been recognized by Condé Nast as one of the top 50 influencers in the country when it comes to the F&B space. Uh, I've been interviewed by BBC two or three times now, I think, about the Bori Kitchen, how we did all of these things. And the brand and the business and my family, we've grown from leaps and bounds, and it's been an amazing story. And we've been very, very lucky. The next 10 minutes are about how did all of this happen. It started with the first experience. Uh, after seeing the reaction of that guest to my mom's food, I decided, hey, let's build a really strong brand around TBK. Let's put some time and effort into this, yeah? So what if it's my mom who's making food? So what if it's auntie who's inviting you home to eat this food? My mom's food can be compared to a Michelin star's, a Michelin chef's dish. Okay, just because she doesn't have a cul culinary degree, it doesn't mean anything. So let's build a brand from that point of view. Let's put time and effort into the logo. Let's put a lot of effort into the copywriting. Let's put some effort into photography. Let's build a personality for this brand that's actually really exciting. And I decided to give this brand two personalities, almost like a split personality. One part of the personality would be mine, incredibly narcissistic and condescending, uh, where we had something called a no serial killer policy. What does that mean? That means if you're going to come to my house, you can't book a seat at the Bori Kitchen. You need to ask for a seat. Yeah, and even after that, it really helps if you're a mutual friend. If you don't know anyone in common between my family and yours or your friends, at least be a prime minister of a country. All right, this is literally written out by Facebook page, but I balance that off with my parents' personality. Okay, that's Nafisa Kapadia and Turab Kapadia. Uh, they genuinely do this for the love of hosting and feeding people. They couldn't care less about the fact that about stage today, I'm trying to grow a business. Okay, they don't care. They want people to come home and they want to feed them. And it's with this endeavor that I decided to design the entire personality around the Bori Kitchen. Which is why, if you go on my Facebook page, one day you will find photographs of Dabba Ghosh, 
which look like it's like a dish that's come out of Master Chef Australia. But on another day, you will find a video taken from a handheld uh, mobile phone of my mom putting ghee on lasan kheema bedu. Okay, a simple egg dish that we bodies eat. And uh, believe it or not, that video which we put up two years back, within three days, got 80,000 organic views on Facebook. That is the kind of brand a Bori Kitchen is. Eventually, the press started to smell the samosas. Okay, so journalists started to come, come in my house way back in 2015. They started walking into the door. Uh, many of these guys came in with this preconceived notion that uh, this guy, this son and this mother and this father, they're probably doing this temporary thing where it's probably a home pop-up. Let's write a small paragraph about them. It'll probably disappear after six months. So let's just, you know, get it while the wave is still high. Every one of them, when they entered my house and then they left my house, their perception completely changed. They realized that, hey, this isn't just an experiment. This is actually an attempt by a family to take bori food outside the community. It's actually something that might just be revolutionary. For the first time, a mother and son have joined hands to create a business which might actually be a national level business a few years from now. And the same reporters went back to their editors and renegotiated the real estate we got in the newspapers. And we suddenly started getting half-page articles and full-page articles. Eventually, regional press started covering us. So first of all, every single English newspaper in the country covered us. There was this incident where I was doing a catering in Pune uh, in a restaurant. And on the table, there was the Times of India. I randomly found my photo in the Times of India without expecting it. Eventually, every single English newspaper wrote about us. They continue to write about us, Tachod. Uh, regional press started writing about us. Marathi papers, Gujarati papers, Hindi papers. It's very funny when they interview me. Uh, eventually, television channels started coming into my house. TV crews. Okay, we had uh, ET Now, we've had various food channels, we've had Colors Infinity. They've just randomly come into my house and they wanted to see what is all this fuss about. If that wasn't enough to inflate my ego, international press started writing about us. New York Magazine wants to write about the Bori Kitchen. The Financial Times in London randomly wrote a review about TBK. Why? Right? I'm not complaining, but fantastic. BBC, like I already told you, covered us twice. Yesterday, there was a two-minute interview of Munaf Kapadia and my mom that was broadcasted across the globe on BBC. For a full day, it was repeated 15 times. Okay, as part of the Asia Business Report. It's amazing. But every single one of these reporters asked me one question two years back. Munaf, what's your vision with the Bori Kitchen? Why are you doing this? Is it just a genuine thing that you want to keep your mom busy or is it something else? Or is it that you want to watch TV and your mom wasn't letting you? At that point in time, I told all of them the same answer with a very glassy-eyed look, knowing fully well this is never going to happen, a very dreamy gaze. I told them that, guys, I want Shah Rukh Khan to come to my house. Okay, my family, we are all Shah Rukh Khan fanatics. We go for every single movie of his. Um, and it would be crazy if one day he picked up the phone and he called my mom and he said, Mom, I mean, he did say mom. He said, Auntie, uh, I've heard so much about your food. I'd love to come one day. But guys, I, I, I had this dream and I knew it's never going to happen. It was just because I knew people would like reading about it. Like you guys are enjoying listening about it. So in 2015, that one full year, I did TBK while I still had my job. And end of 2015, I did this very dramatic thing, what everyone else considers incredibly dramatic. In fact, the day I took this decision, I swear on God, there was a drum roll playing somewhere. I decided to quit Google. Every single person reacted with shock and awe. They were like, Munaf, you must be the most courageous person in the world, or you're the stupidest individual on this planet. Google, your dream job, the dream company. But guys, I have a confession to make on the stage. If your company is really that good, if it's really that great that it's going to create an environment to grow, to help you grow, to help you shape your well-being, it will help you leave the company when the time is right. And that's what Google is. It's a kind of place where the kind of colleagues I had, they taught me a lesson very early on in my life. That you don't look at life from a lens of six months and 12 months and two years. You look at life from a five-year lens, from a 10-year lens, from a 15-year lens. And that's when you realize that if you take a pause from whatever you're doing in your life for a year to pursue a dream of selling samosas with your mom, it will pay off. It'll be worth it. Don't be scared of doing that. And thanks to that, I could take this decision of quitting Google. 
2016 started where Munaf Kapadias uh, became the full-time chief eating officer at the Bori Kitchen. Yeah, uh, full gung ho, guns blazing, trying to figure out how to run my own business, setting up a kitchen, hiring people, standardizing recipes, increasing shelf life, pilferage, compliances, uh, paying salaries on time. I hated every single second of it. In 2016, I discovered that there's this demon inside me. It's a demon called diffidence where I realized that I completely lack the confidence to do any of the ugly things that a food business requires. I hated the idea of looking for kitchen space and finding something which could fit within my budget. I was doing this with my savings. I hated the idea of figuring out how do you cook biryani. I'm not passionate about food. I'm passionate about standing on stage and talking to all of you, all the cool stuff. I'm passionate about making a Facebook page and putting up creatives. I don't want to figure out which guy from UP or Bihar or from wherever I need to hire and then I need to convince him to stay in my kitchen, learn how to cook and then retain him. It's not exciting. So what did I do? I went to each and every friend of mine and I begged them to help me. I told them, guys, I don't want to do all of this stuff. Take 50% of my business if you must. Or if you must, I'll build this beautiful brand. But you handle the finances, you handle the uh, operations. Let me do all of the cool stuff. Let me generate business. It took me more than 12 months to realize another very valuable lesson fairly early on in my life. That when your startup, when your baby is at that stage, that fledgling stage, the stage of being a hatchling, the only person who can help you is yourself. However sincere the help might be, the only person who will feel a punch in his gut when you get that one out of five on Zomato is you because it's your baby. In December 2016, when I was finally just looking, going through all my bills and I was uh, settling my accounts, I realized something really sad. I realized that I burned through almost all of my savings. And I, I wasn't even prepared for this. And it hit me so badly that I decided enough is enough. I can't do this anymore. Let's just go back into the corporate boat. Okay, I'm going to quit PBK. I was literally going to click on the apply now button for another uh, fancy MNC and you know get another job when I got a phone call. The phone call was from Forbes and they told me, Munaf, congratulations for doing so well. Uh, we want to put you on the 30 under 30 list on the Forbes magazine and we want to put you on the cover. And uh, I did one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life. I said, why? <laughs> uh, I said that, guys, I'm not doing very well. I'm not making money. I'm losing money. I've literally destroyed my brand in the last 12 months. Whatever little my mother created with her hard work and sweat, I have destroyed it with my attempt at entrepreneurship. And they told me something really wonderful where I learned a third lesson in my life at a fairly young age that um, they put me on that list not because I'm successful. They put me on the list because I'm on the verge of success. They genuinely felt and they were optimistic about it that if I continue doing what I'm doing and I don't give up, and maybe I get acknowledged for it, I might one day create something which is phenomenal. It's off the beaten track. You know, a mother and son selling samosas and becoming popular and famous for it. 2017, the year we are currently in. So I obviously didn't give up on TBK. Instead, I changed my mindset completely. I decided that, hey, I need to go to the kitchen. I need to figure all of this out. So let's go to the kitchen and let's do it. And it immediately had an impact on my business. The first month itself, January 2017, TBK for the first time broke even. Okay, we were green suddenly. My little current account which used to have 1000 rupees, 2000 rupees at the end of every month, suddenly had 7000 rupees, <laughs> 10,000 rupees. Uh, suddenly our food became a little more consistent. Our delivery times became shorter and they've become much better as we go on now. My team is becoming a lot more consistent. I suddenly have people in my team who I can rely on, who I'm looking forward to grooming into people who will stay with me for the next two years. It's, it's finally turning into a business. My goal with the Bori Kitchen is that if any of you today will ask me, Munaf, what's your vision with TBK now? Now that you've gone through all of this, you've experienced all of this, do you still aspire for Shah Rukh Khan to come? My answer to that is absolutely yes. But one thing's changed since two years back and today. Today when you ask me, will Shah Rukh come to your house? Do you want him to come to your house? I will tell you absolutely yes, I want Shah Rukh Khan to come to my house. But the difference is, this time around, I actually believe he will. 
Guys, I've hosted Farah Khan and Ashutosh Gowarikar. Aditya Chopra and Rani Mukherjee have invited us to their house to do a catering for Mukh uh, Rani's birthday. I was having a conversation with Rahul Bose a few weeks back at my house about biryani at Sabosa's. Rishi Kapoor invited me to his house along with his sweet wife to uh, do a small catering and he enjoyed it so much he came to my house after that and he shared a meal with me and my parents. It's insane, it's unbelievable. All of this started three years back with one dining experience. So will Shah Rukh Khan come? I genuinely hope so. But today another thing's changed as well. I have a broader vision with the Bori Kitchen. Today's vision is I want to create a brand and I want to create a story that is so interesting and it generates so much curiosity that it reaches every single part of this world. And in doing so, I want to take Bori food to every single part of this world. So tomorrow, or today, when I get off the stage after this presentation, I am the chief eating officer at the Bori Kitchen. But I'm hoping, I'm genuinely hoping a year from now, uh, I'm invited back on the stage. But the person that on that day won't be the chief eating officer anymore, he'll be a CEO of a company that's considered to be an example of how a family can really get together. And with a little social experiment, create a food brand that's considered one of the sexiest food brands in the country. Thank you so much.